It's a story that is all too familiar for the Roman Catholic Church in New York and across the world. A child was sexually abused by a trusted priest, and when officials in the Archdiocese of New York were made aware of the crimes, they denied it, taking the word of a predatory priest over the words of a suffering child. And the priest remained in ministry for decades with unrestricted access to children. Father Francis Stinner was ordained in the Archdiocese of New York in 1967 and assigned to Immaculate Conception in Port Jervis. Stinner sexually abused multiple children while at Immaculate Conception in the late 1960s and early 1970s. In 1972, Stinner was assigned to John S. Burke Catholic High School in Goshen, New York, and continued sexually abusing at least one of the children from Immaculate Conception. The abuse ended for that survivor in 1980, when Stinner was assigned to John F. Kennedy Catholic High School in Summers, New York. In 1988, the survivor found the courage to tell his parents about the abuse he suffered, who then met with Archdiocese officials several times. All the while, Stinner remained in ministry with access to vulnerable children. With no apology and nothing being done for their son, the survivor's father hand-delivered a letter to Cardinal John O'Connor. When they were finally given assurances that Stinner had received treatment and would no longer have access to children, the parents stopped pressing the issue. After leaving John F. Kennedy School in Summers and allegedly receiving treatment, Stinner was assigned to St. Joseph's in Bronxville, New York in 1991. Years later, the survivor learned Stinner was still in ministry and had won an award for running a Catholic youth organization program. The survivor was outraged as he and his family were assured that Stinner would be kept away from children. This time, the survivor took action himself. He met with Archdiocese officials, including Cardinal John O'Connor and Vice Chancellor for Priest Personnel, Monsignor Edward O'Donnell, and he demanded that Stinner be removed from ministry. The officials continued to deny the allegations and told the survivor it came down to Stinner's word against his. Unbeknownst to the survivor, at least two other reports of abuse by Stinner had been made to the archdiocese over time. Determined to validate his story, the survivor contacted former altar boys who served with Father Stinner. His story is validated through letters from several of the former altar boys. After additional meetings with Cardinal John O'Connor and Monsignor Edward O'Donnell, the survivor finally settled with the Archdiocese of New York. Under the condition, he signed a confidentiality agreement, and the Archdiocese of New York continued to shield Stinner. It wasn't until 1997, in the wake of many allegations, that church officials hired a firm headed by a former New York Police Department commissioner to investigate clergy abuse within the archdiocese. During the investigation, Stinner was removed from St. Joseph's in Bronxville, New York. At the completion of the investigation, a spokesman for the archdiocese made assurances that Stinner would not return to a parish with children. Two years later, Stinner returned to celebrate Mass at two Westchester churches. In 2002, the archdiocese finally included Stinner's name on a list of accused priests which they supplied to Orange County prosecutors. Sadly, the archdiocese did not include the investigation's findings, which corroborated his guilt. In 2005, nearly 40 years after being ordained, Father Stinner was permanently removed from ministry and laicized. Stinner died in 2017. And now, in 2019, the unknown number of children Stinner harmed while he was in ministry continue to suffer as adults. And yet many of those survivors are now choosing to come forward, seeking justice and accountability. <laughs>